Sadly, I have to say your Call of Duty settings no longer work the way they used to. And the biggest change happened to controllers, aim assist, and specifically the default and Black Ops aim assist types. You see, what we used to have at the start of Season 3 was Black Ops being a bit stronger and lasting longer in aim assist window size, especially for long ranges. After an update before Season 4, things changed a little, and default was stronger in most cases. That was when I made another video about aim assist updates. But now in Season 4, some of that information is no longer valid. I also tested multiple new settings like Weapon FOV to give you the best new settings for controllers. So let's start with default versus Black Ops. I tested them on PC, PS5 and Xbox in 6 different situations, close, mid and long range, for right and left stick independently. What I noticed after the recent update, there is only one situation where the Black Ops aim assist is stronger than the default. Before this update, Black Ops was nerfed and was weaker in most situations compared to the default. Now they made it identical to default based on over 100 tests I made yesterday. I noticed there is not a single millisecond or a single percent strong stronger aim assist when comparing Black Ops to default for left and right stick in close and long range. But as I told you, there is one situation and that is mid range. Maybe they somehow missed it or will change it later. But currently on mid range, the Black Ops aim assist on the left stick alone lasts longer about 17% compared to the default. When it comes to your aim known as the right stick, again, there is no difference. It is also hard for me to tell if it's a good thing or not because some people wouldn't want that. And by 17% we don't mean the strength, no, that's target following based on the enemy location. So your aim is actually going to follow the target for a longer period and it will cause a stickier situation to get out of it, especially in the reverse direction and if there are multiple enemies on different distances. So first let me know in the comments which mod do you still prefer. And would you like to have stickier aim in mid-range for the left stick? But what is still valid after the update? The change in field of view which can affect the aim assist is still valid. This chart which I showed you in the last video is still valid in terms of how the aim assist changes depending on the FOV value. But there is something new I recently tested. One of you asked if the weapon field of view default or void matter. Yes, it does. The weapon FOV change isn't as much as the change in camera. But as I tested it both narrow and default will give you the same strength of aim assist but once you use wide and keep in mind it's also dependent on the main fov if you choose the option affected it does affect aim assist for example with the field of view of 100 when i change the weapon fov to wide at this amount of speed you can see on the screen the aim assist timing reduced by 16 milliseconds which means i have 16 milliseconds less aim assist when using wide with my current sensitivity settings of course don't get too used to aim assist as we talked about it in another video which you can check from the card above too much aim assist could sometimes be a disadvantage so ensure to check that video as well to understand what works best for you. Another question is does response curve affect aim assist? Yes, it does and no. It doesn't. We have three kinds of response curves in COD, known as default, linear, and dynamic. Some people think they look like this, which is wrong. Based on another test we made, the response curves are most likely to look like this. And even with a slope scale of zero, they will not be a real linear or dynamic curve. So when it does not affect aim assist, if we consider the moment per distance and FOV over the time of the test, let me make it simple as if you're only 50 years old. If I have the same amount of a speed when moving my aim from position A to B, meaning if it takes the same amount of time for the distance that is traveled, then it does not matter what response curve I am using. Now let me explain as if you are only a 5 years old kid. Let's say we have a very fast car capable of 300 miles and in contrast a slow car capable of 50 miles. Now if both of them are moving at 30 miles per hour without any change in speed, then none of them is faster than the other. The same goes here. Now let me explain it as if you are a pro. The aim assist works the same but achieved at a different stick movement value. For example, dynamic as we see here on the chart has a small bump. 
So if I push my stick this much and change to dynamic or compare it to default, then in that case, the aim assist is affected by the response curve. But if I'm trying on a similar raw speed, then it doesn't matter. If you didn't understand what I mean, it also doesn't matter. Because the fact is you never keep your analog stick in the same position or speed, right? We tend to move it a lot, reverse it, and it's never stable. You don't even think about it. And in that case, the curves that have a closer shape to linear or go above a linear your curve tend to have less aim assist meaning you can get out of aim assist window much faster it's less hard to switch your targets one of the points of using less lifted stick max we talked about before was the same thing more speed easier to get out of the aa window size but the change could also lead to a faster aim assist activation that you can check from the card above or the link in the comments but now you might be asking so which response curve tends to give you more aim assist not like making it stronger but indirectly making it harder for you to switch targets being stickier based on my test that's first a standard because of the smooth exponential curve it has and afterward dynamic however it's uh, a small bump that could interrupt the stickiness of aim assist and linear comes at last if you change the slope scale to zero it even becomes more effective for linear however in that case people tend to use a lower sensitivity so i would say uh, throw something in between the dynamic is a bit too much sometimes because of the bump it has here if you have a high sensitivity and by that i mean over six in reverse s curve that could be a bit much and for small pushes you will get out of window size much faster and makes it harder in long range for some people but could also be an advantage for mid ranges if you play with a low to mid sensitivity while linear is steady and it's actually like this exponential but less aggressive than the others so give it a try or maybe try it with less slop scale i would suggest you try dynamic with a slope scale of 40 to 80 slowly decrease it over time for a few matches and see how it goes for you the standard tends to give you something between linear and dynamic which may work well for some people so let me know which one you prefer and i will do an advanced testing in future videos regarding response curves you may also ask did cod nerf black ops or made the default stronger first in the middle of season 3 they nerfed black ops and made it weaker than default and now they match it to the default with a little advantage for mid-range if you look at it in long-term test the black ops got nerfed over time and now it's the closest to the default maybe it's finally time to remove these two and just put an option as a standard aim assist unless they change it in the future again so let's see what will happen for now the difference is shallow what is the strongest aim assist currently and how to achieve it for the strongest use black ops lift the sig max value on 69 and if you want a stickier aim use a standard curve but I would also suggest drawing linear and dynamic with a lower slop scale. For field of view, still use the chart you see on the screen for the left or right stick. But think about if you want more aim assist on the left, sorry on the left or right stick but when it comes to weapon field of view use default or narrow for the highest aim assist strength that also helps with decreasing fps drops in huge maps which also leads to less input lag and smoother aim assist because of higher fps it's shallow again but worth trying if you like another question was if you can overclock the controllers on consoles as far as my knowledge goes it's not possible yet but they also asked if the whole effect is good enough compared to analog sticks i used to say not that much but after i tested the apex 4 from felidg it changed my mind these all effects are so good and smooth to use so i'd highly suggest checking my review on this controller from the card if you play on xbox or pc it has a 1000 hz polling rate even wirelessly and it's one of the fastest controllers i've tested so far i also did a comparison between dualsense edge and apex 4 which you can check in the same video but do you feel you are addicted to playing cod do you want a better lock Life that is not all about call of duty then maybe check this video next where i talked about seven reasons you can't play any new games i'm just kidding keep playing cod wait should i start making asmr cod videos okay that's enough imagine if my girlfriend saw that <laughs>